This is the Gulu GTX 300 power station. I'll be putting it through a series of tests in my video so to see how good it is and if it delivers on its promises. The first test is to push its limits and I'll be connecting AC devices to it and drawing the maximum power from it to see first how much time the battery will last and second if it heats up and if it cuts off during the test. The second test will be to see if it can charge all USB devices that are connected to the four USB ports on it. And the third test, it will be to charge it from zero to 100% using its power brick and external USB-C PD charger that is 65 watts. And the fourth and most important test, in my opinion, is to see if it can power up sensitive devices like a CPAP machine. And of course, I'll be covering the usable, like I'm gonna be unboxing it, talking about its specifications, its ports, and its controls. So let's start first by showing you what comes in its box. Let's open the box. It's very well packed. So this is everything you get in the box. You have a power adapter, a power cable for the power adapter, USB-C to USB-C cable, cigarette lighter charger. Of course, you have also the power station and you have some documentation and some labels. Let me tell you quickly the specifications of this power station. So it has a pure sine wave, AC 110 volts, 60 hertz. The maximum output is 300 watts, but it can go to 600 watts as a surge power. It has a lithium ion battery that is almost 300 watts hour, 83,200 milliampere hour. It has also an MPPT controller for solar charging, and this is really important. It weighs only 8.8 .8 pounds, and this is really very good. And it has this nice 7 inch LCD screen. On the back, it has an LED light. Let me show you how it functions very quickly. Careful now, it will light up very bright. So the first press on the button here, it will light up on the first intensity. And the second one, it will light up on a more powerful intensity. And the third one is a flashing light. And another one, it will turn off completely. And also it has many protection mechanisms, like for instance, it has protection mechanism for overdraw, overload, short circuit, and thermal protections, and etc. Let me show you now the ports and the controls on this power station. These two ports here are for the alternative current, and this hole here is just empty so that the ground of any plug will go in there. To activate the AC power, you need to press the AC on off button here. And this way, this one lights up and it means that these ports are active now. So let me turn off the AC. And these ports here are the DC power. The first one here is a cigarette lighter, which is 12 volts, 10 amps. So you open it like this, it is protected. And this one here is 12 volts, 5 amps. And this one also is 12 volts, 5 amps. You have here a quick charging USB-A port. And this one is 5 volts. 2.4 amps also USB-A and this one here is the input output so this is PD 60 watts you can also charge the power station using this port and also you can use it to charge other devices with PD power and this USB-C port is 5 volts 3 amps and to activate the DC power you need to press this button here and you see that on the screen it says DC it means that the DC is activated now. Now, on the back of the power station, I already showed you the control of the LED light. For the input here, this is where you put the plug of the power brick that comes with it. And this port here is the Anderson port where you can connect a solar panel to charge it using solar energy. On the side of the power station, you have ventilations here. And this side also has a ventilation and there's a power of fan in it. You're gonna hear it when I put it to its limits using the AC power. Now it's time for the ultimate test, which is pushing the limits test. I connected a PC and a light to the power station and both of them will consume around 300 watts. So the purpose of this test is first to see if this power station can provide 300 watts continuously without cutting off and without heating up. And the second purpose of this test is to measure also the time for the battery to take to deplete from 100% to 0% and at the same time you kind of 
measure the estimate time here if it is correct. So I have a watt meter that can measure all this. And the third purpose of this test is also to measure the efficiency of the power station by measuring the watt hours that it will provide before the battery depletes. So let me turn on the power station on the AC power and we're gonna start the test. So now I turned on the AC power and now I'm gonna turn on the PC. So now I'm gonna launch on the PC a program that will stress its GPU. It is called Furmark. And I'm gonna run another program that it will stress its CPU so that the PC will draw the maximum voltage from the power station. So now with stressing the GPU, it is drawing around 200 watts only. So let's stress the CPU with Cinebench. And notice now that the PC is drawing around 240 watts. So now I'm gonna turn on the light. So now we're maxing out the output of the power station. You see it is giving 300 watts. So now it's estimating that it will last around one hour. So it's saying 0 0.9 hours. So I'm gonna zoom in now so that you see everything up close. But before zooming in, I wanted you to listen to the fan of the power station because as soon as it started drawing wattage from the AC output, the fan started operating. So I'm gonna bring my microphone close to the fan and you're gonna listen to it. So it's not too loud, but it is noticeable. So now let me zoom in. While the test is running, I also want to show you the voltage output of this power station. And we're gonna also take a look at the amperage. So for the voltage, it is providing 114 volts, which is really very good. And for amperage now, it is drawing 2.72 amperes. Let's check now at 4% capacity if the voltage is still stable and the amperage and the wattage. So for the wattage, it is still stable. And the voltage, it is still stable also. And the amperage also. So now the battery of the power station is completely depleted. Let's see the results on the watt meter. So the first result you're seeing here is that the power station gave 50 minutes of operation under full load. So it missed its estimate by four minutes because when we started the test, it estimated 0 0.9 hours and 0 0.9 hours is 54 minutes. So here it is 50 minutes. So let's see the second result here, which is the watt hour. So you see here that the power station gave 254 watts hour. If you add the two watts that the watt meter consumes, it means that it gave 256 watt hours and 256 watt hours are almost 85% of the 299.52 watt hours that the power station provides. So the efficiency score is 85%, which is an excellent score. And let's see the maximum wattage that was consumed during this test. So I'm gonna go to watt high. So the maximum wattage that was consumed from the power station was 311 in the test that I just did. And you saw that the output was stable and it never cut throughout the test. The following test is to consist on seeing if this power station can charge all the connected USB devices to it simultaneously and how much wattage would they draw. So first I'm gonna turn it on on DC and then I'm gonna plug my Android tablet that is USB-C and this should be rapidly charging. And notice here that it says charging rapidly. It means that the fast charging is working. We're gonna see at the end after I connect all the devices if it will still be fast charging. So now my USB-C tablet is drawing around 15 watts. Let's connect now the Soundcore mini speaker to it and see how much wattage it will draw now. And the Soundcore mini is charging and it drew around only 3 watts to charge. So now I'm gonna connect my iPad and this is iPad connected and you notice that the wattage jumped directly to 29 from 17 and this is my iPhone. And the wattage also went to 33 when I connected my iPhone. So now let's check if the tablet is still rapidly charging. So yes, it's still rapidly charging and all the devices are charging at once. And the maximum wattage that is drawn from the power station is between 33 and 35 watts. 
So now I'll be starting the charging test. The battery of the power station is completely depleted. As you see, it is at 0%. So the purpose of this test is first to see how much time it will take for the battery of the power station to charge from 0 to 100% using the power brick and an external also 65 watt USB-C charger that is very fast. And also the second purpose of this test is to see if the estimate time that it will put here on its LCD screen will be accurate. This is the estimate time of the charging time. So I'm going to time it and we're going to see the results. So let me hook it up to the power brick and then to the USB-C charger. And I'm going to start the timing and I'm going to zoom in so for you to see it up close. And this is the timer started. And we're going to give it a minute so that it goes to the maximum wattage that it can take so that we can estimate the time here. So this is the maximum wattage. It is taking approximately from 140, a little bit more, sometimes 144 watts. And it's estimating the charging time to 2.5 hours. And I have the timer here. So let me now zoom in. So for you to see all this up close. After exactly one hour, the power station is already charged to 41% and the estimated charging time is 1.4 hours. After two hours, the power station charged to 80% and this is exactly what is written in the documentation and also on the box of this power station. And the estimated charging time remaining is half an hour. After 83%, the power station isn't drawing the maximum power anymore and this is a protection mechanism so that the battery will last longer. And it was drawing less and less wattage as it advanced in the charging and the estimate time here is completely wrong so it is estimating around three hours which is not right at all so the charging finished in exactly two hours and 54 minutes the results of this test were that it really charged from zero to 80 percent like it says in the documentation in exactly two hours but it missed the estimate of charging from zero to 100 percent in 2.5 hours like it was estimating it here so it took 24 minutes more to charge it but this is not a bad thing and the charging was fairly fast so the test that i'll be doing now is to see if this gtx 300 power station can power a cpap machine without any problem so let's turn it on first so this is ac and let's plug in the cpap machine so the first good thing is that the cpap machine turned on on standby the cpap machine is drawing two watts from the power station let's start the cpap machine And it started without any problem. Let's see how much watts it is drawing. So it is drawing 33 watts constantly. And on this level of wattage, you can run your CPAP machine for up to 9 hours. Now let me tell you what I like and what I don't like in this Gulu GTX 300 power station. What I like about it is that it has an excellent build quality and it's not too heavy. Also, the LED light on the back of it is really a very nice touch. What I also like about it is that it has a pure sine wave output and this output stays constant even under heavy load until the power station even reaches 1%. And also what I like about it is that it has multiple outputs and also multiple inputs to charge it. And the solar power input here is really very good also. Now what I don't like about it is that when you put it in AC power and even under moderate load, the fan will run and the fan tends to be a little bit noisy. And also, and this is weird, I found this Vitoman label in the box and like Vitoman is also a power station manufacturer. What I've done is that I contacted Gulu and they said maybe during the manufacturing process, this label was put there by mistake. I mean, this is nitpicking, but it's a little bit weird, so I wanted to mention it. If you want to check out this Gulu GTX 300 power station, I'm going to leave an Amazon affiliate link in the description below. If you make a purchase using my link, I will gain a small percentage and this is at no cost to you and this will support my channel. If you like my video, please share it, subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. I want to thank you all for watching. I'm Eloy from Knowledge Sharing Tech. See you on the next video.